Welcome to another video. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than usual um, because normally I'm doing things like tutorials for Blender. This time I want to elaborate a little bit on an article I wrote um, about a sort of a new way to use Blender, sort of a new problem that Blender can solve using rendering and I'm calling it rendering for robots. So normally when we think about 3D rendering, we think about things like 3D animation, visual effects, things like that. And the common theme with all of those things is that the end product will eventually be watched by a person or an audience like humans It will be consumed by humans. Now with this new concept that I talk about here, um, this is not the case. So the rendered images will be fed into um, an AI model to learn from. And this is mostly in the context of things like image recognition and computer vision. Um, because for that you need example images and Blender can be used to, to create them. So. Um, this is called um, synthetic training data. And the reason I'm writing this article is that over the past few months, we have been working with a, an AI company doing this very thing. And at Blender Grid, of course, we, we uh, are a render farm, so we can do a lot of rendering and high volume. And over the past few months, we have rendered terabytes of frames um, with them. And yeah, they're not being watched uh, or consumed by humans, but they're only being used um, for AI. And um, I also thought it was interesting because AI is getting um, a lot more attention lately, uh, also because of chat GPT, which is um, a little bit of a different example of AI, but chat GPT is also using um, this concept called deep learning, um, where the input is text and the output is text. You you type in text and it will respond with text. Um, in this article, we talk about deep learning or computer vision. So the input is an image and the output could be text, like the description of the image, but it could also be um, another image where if if say you want to train a model that uh, looks at an image and then it masks out all the donuts in the image. So the input is an image and the output is a black and white mask where everything is black except where there are donuts for whatever reason. Um, uh, if you create a robot for um, finding donuts or something. Um, so yeah, the next section is, okay, deep learning. I'm not going to go too deep into the details, but what has been happening over the maybe past 10 years ish is that our compute power got good enough that we realized um, that if you have a very uh, seemingly complicated problem, you can simply go in and throw a bigger model at this. And this is like an example of two neural networks. The left one is shallow or small and the right one is big. And um, neural networks are a pretty old concept. I think they've been used in the 80s um, already, but the compute power was not um, good enough to, to create very big models with this. Um, and it turns out that if you have a very complicated thing that you want to learn or you want to let the computer learn, um, you can simply start throwing bigger and bigger neural networks at it. And if you have a neural network with um, um, a bunch of these inner um, layers, then it's called deep learning. Um, and to give you a bit more context here, like if you don't know anything about um, neural networks, it's pretty much mapping from an input on the left to an output on the right. If it was an input um, of an image, every blue 
um, little dot here could be um, a pixel value between zero and one. Zero being um, black, one being white. And then it's fed, this value is fed through this network of nodes and, and connections. And then the output could also be an image or it could be um, the first one says, this is a cat. The second one says, this is a dog. Third one, uh, this is a donut. So it could be uh, a description of what the image is. Um, so that's the concept of, you know, a neural network. And if it's a big neural network, it's generally called deep learning. The downside of deep learning is, like I said before, it requires a lot of compute power. Um, and the second thing is it requires a lot of training data. And training data is pretty much examples of images where you know what it is. So if you train this network on images and you want it to spit out what, what's in the image, you need to give it thousands or even millions of examples, training examples of images of dogs and then saying this is an image of a dog and then it starts to learn and recognize patterns that are common with all the images of dogs and um, that just requires a ton of training data and that is the problem um, that is the problem where blender can help because um, talking about blender now blender can create images that look really photorealistic as you can see with these four images that I grabbed off um, blenderartists.org blender can create realistic images so the general way to do uh, to, to get your hands on training examples for image recognition is to just get a bunch of photos but this is pretty limited and it's really hard to just get a million photos of something. Um, so with Blender, you can kind of automate uh, a whole lot of stuff. And you might think taking a photo of an apartment like this is way easier than taking a photo, taking a, creating this render. And that's true. But one single photo is not really going to help you. You need thousands of different photos of apartments if that's what you want to recognize with a model. And once you have modeled all of this stuff, it is really easy in Blender to just create a uh, hundred different camera angles and a hundred different lighting setups uh, with your existing scene. So that's where you can leverage Blender versus taking real life photos. And that's, um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about here. You, it's, it's easy to create many variations. Um, so in this example, it's like, if you want a, a model that needs training data of uh, pictures of donuts, you can create a few different donuts, a few different backgrounds, a few lighting setups, and a few camera angles. And with those, you can create thousands of, um, of variations that are unique. And this concept that it, I talk about this in um, a video I did before about creating NFT collections, which is kind of similar in the way you think about these different variations and creating unique combinations of things. Uh, it's kind of the same concept, uh, but that's very easy to do in Blender and it's um, you can really automate that. Um, so that's a really cool solution to the problem of needing more training data. Um, and then, um, of course, uh, Blender Grid is a render farm, so that's why I'm, I'm writing about this. Um, once you create, once you set up Blender to create thousands of different variations of something, you still need to render them. And especially if it's a photorealistic uh, render, it, it takes a bunch of render time. And that's where we can help. And uh, that's what we did um, with this AI uh, company. Uh, that needed this training data. Uh, they set up Blender and then send it off to us to uh, do the final renders. And yeah, that's pretty much the concept. So 
The problem with deep learning is it needs a lot of training data. This can be solved with Blender. And that's the whole concept. And I thought it was an interesting use case because this is one of the first examples that I found where the final render will not be necessarily viewed by humans, maybe only to check if it works. But if there's like a million images you've rendered of slight variations of things, you're not going to watch all those images or check them. Um, you just let the computer train on them. And so um, to wrap up, if you are uh, a 3D artist, how like if you have nothing to do with, with AI, um, why is this useful? Well, if you are afraid that AI will start taking over the art industry uh, or the art world by, you know, being able to create art, then this is a way where you can kind of join the revolution. And if you can work with Blender, you can uh, help solve this problem. Um, and on the other hand, if you don't know anything about Blender, but you are you stumbled upon this article or video um, and you are into AI, uh, but you don't know about Blender and you are interested in um, synthetic training data generation, um, this is cool because you can reach out to us. We have a big network of 3D artists that can work with Blender and that can potentially help you out with that. Um, so that is the article. I uh, just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on it. If you have any comments on this, please leave them below. Um, if you think I had something, I said something wrong, also, please let me know. Um, I'm here to learn and I'm not, not necessarily an expert on AI. Um, my expertise is more in Blender and rendering. Um, and then finally, like I said before, this is not a uh, common video. Uh, normally I do more tutorial type stuff and I might consider doing a tutorial about how to use Blender to do training data generation for AI, if that's something people are interested in. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I'll, I'll consider doing a tutorial on this because I think it's an interesting topic. So that's it. Uh, the article about how to render for robots. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.